welcome children to this session children today we are going to discuss about another easy lesson of your physics that is sound this term is very much known to us of all it's an easy lesson children number of concepts that we are going to learn today we are going to see uh, many interesting facts regarding this lesson sound to begin with how are we going to define the term sound sound it is a form of energy which causes the sensation of hearing this is the simplest definition we can say about the term sound the second part how sound is being produced we see variety of sound but we must know how they are all produced sound is produced by vibration of objects whichever the objects vibrate sound is produced sound is produced by vibration vibrating objects or vibration of objects we have a special voice box which is here it will be explained in the coming slide children we have voice box which is known as larynx which has got two vocal cords the vocal cords vibrate from which sound is produced all those things you are going to see in this lesson the definition and how sound is produced sound can be produced by various objects various ways few ways i have mentioned children you can make a pause of it and note all the points children sound can be produced by vibrating objects it may be strings instruments which are the strings instruments which are being displayed in the next slide vibrating a column that's flute vibrating membranes that's the type of instruments tabla and drum etc vibrating plates bicycle bell etc children note sound is a longitudinal wave children it is a new term to you listen carefully we are going to discuss in detail about this in this lesson first we know what is sound it is a form of energy which causes the sensation of hearing but here we have one more wave periodic disturbance created in a medium carrying energy is known as wave that's how we discuss when you go to air classes you will learn more about wave wave is nothing but a periodic disturbance which is created in a medium carrying energy is known as wave typically there are two classification of waves children one is longitudinal wave second is transverse wave here sound it is a longitudinal wave it is not a transverse wave therefore what is transverse wave a wave which requires material medium this wave longitudinal wave requires material medium for its propagation for the sound to travel a medium is required it may be air medium or solid medium or liquid medium sound requires a material medium for its propagation that is for its movement it is longitudinal wave transverse wave wave which does not require any material medium for its propagation example sun rays x rays gamma rays uv ultraviolet rays radio waves these waves do not require any material uh, 
system for its propagation children when you go to higher classes you will study more about them just i have given uh, a brief introduction about those waves wave it is a periodic disturbance which is created in a medium carrying energy is a wave longitudinal wave transverse wave the diagrammatic representation i have given children the diagrammatic representation of longitudinal wave is this transverse wave which i told you is this children what is the difference between these two a longitudinal wave we see there are certain places waves are closer that is vibrating particles are closer there are places in which the vibrating particles are wider or far away from each other where they are far away from each other we call refraction where they are closer together we call them compression so this longitudinal wave children will have compressions and refractions whereas this transverse wave which is got crests and troughs children crest is nothing but the uppermost part of the wave children topmost part of the wave is called crest bottommost part of the wave is known as trough children longitudinal wave has got compressions and refractions transverse wave has got crests and troughs so this is about longitudinal wave sound wave is a longitudinal wave in this how the the propagation of the sound wave takes place particles vibrate in this longitudinal wave particles vibrate parallel to the direction of propagation in this particles vibrate perpendicular to the direction of propagation so about this uh, you will study more about in your uh, higher class children second note sound requires a material medium for its propagation as i told you earlier children sound wave it is a longitudinal wave it requires a material medium for its propagation it requires a medium to move it may be a liquid or solid or air to support this we have an experiment which says round sound requires material medium for propagation bells are experiment which is mentioned in your textbook children the diagrammatic representation is this children in this this is a bell jar in which an electric bell is being fixed the wires are being connected to battery and the switch the bell jar has a, a pipe which is connected to a pump called vacuum pump see vacuum pump is used to, to remove the air which is present inside the jar this explanation is like this children very simple one the experimental setup is shown in the figure when the switch is on electricity flows therefore the electric bell starts ringing we will be able to hear the sound when the electric bell rings but slowly if the vacuum pump is started to suck up the air present inside the bell jar the sound volume of the sound slowly will go down at one point of time sound will not be heard even if the bell is ringing therefore which says that this sound requires a material medium for its propagation so no air no sound it requires material medium for its propagation the diagrammatic part and the explanation part you have to learn children
the same experiment using different situation children. The third one, as we have discussed earlier children, we have a voice box. A voice box is known as larynx. Larynx has two ligaments children, two ligaments called vocal cords. We have the voice box called larynx. Larynx has two ligaments. The names of the ligaments are called vocal cords. When the vocal cords vibrate, sound is produced. This is the voice box. This is the interior part of it. These are the two vocal cords. They vibrate to produce sound. So we have a special hearing aid, natural aid that is human ear, which is very precious. We have two ears, one mouth to speak less and to hear more. Human ear, we will see what are the parts, its functions in detail. Children, this is the diagrammatic representation of a human ear children, which has got three main parts. One is the outer ear, from here to here, outer ear. The second one is middle ear. The third one is inner ear. Only the first part, the outer ear, a part of outer ear is seen to us, which we call it as pinna, through which there is a canal called ear canal, through which sound travels. So, sound enters the outer ear through ear canal and it reaches a drum called ear drum children, ear drum. So when the sound reaches the eardrum, the eardrum vibrates. This vibration gets transferred from one to another, gets transferred to middle ear through three tiny ear bones. They are called hammer, anvil and stirrup. So sound energy in the form of vibrations, it gets transferred from the outer ear to the middle ear through these tiny ear bones. Then this vibration reaches the inner ear in the form of vibrations. The vibrations are sensed. Then we have a special nerve called auditory nerve which takes this information to the brain. Brain senses as sound which is hearing. So therefore, sound is a form of energy which causes the sensation of hearing. This is about it children. There are three main parts of uh, the hear, human ear children. First one is outer, second one is middle, third one is inner. The outer part which we see is called as pinna. Sound enters through the outer ear then it moves through ear canal and it reaches the ear drum. Ear drum vibrates. This vibration gets transferred into the inner middle part of the ear through the three tiny ear bones. They are hammer, anvil and stirrup. Then this vibration reaches the inner ear. Then we have a special nerve called auditory nerve. This nerve takes this vibration part and reaches the brain. Brain senses the sound and it is nothing but hearing. Sound is a form of energy which causes the sensation of hearing. We know that sound is a longitudinal way it requires a material medium for its propagation. 
it requires a support for its propagation for its movement children therefore sound can travel through solids through liquids through gases sound cannot travel in vacuum vacuum means nothing even air columns or air particles air molecules are not there so which is the place where vacuum is created the outer space you can say okay the the atmosphere stays about few kilometers above which which is empty we call which is vacuum not even air molecules are not there therefore some sound cannot travel in vacuum therefore it requires material medium for its propagation we have seen that experiment part so sound can travel through solids liquids and gases the next question is children in which medium the speed of sound is more the question is to you in which medium speed of sound can be more speed of sound is maximum in solid state minimum in a zero in vacuum so speed of sound in air is about 340 meters per second water about 1500 meters per second and even in solids it's about 5000 meters per second or even more more related to this children the number of activities which are being mentioned small small activities try to do them at home children you will get rich experience about this term sir characteristics of vibration it's another important term related to sound children amplitude amplitude see the if you consider transverse wave the height of the wave height of the wave differs if the height of the wave is about 6 to 7 8 meters it becomes tsunami descent height of the wave height of the wave is nothing but amplitude the maximum displacement of the wave from its mean position if it is the this is the average level of water the wave reaches to this height then we call the maximum displacement of the wave from its mean position is called amplitude or the maximum displacement of a vibrating object from its central position is called amplitude if the amplitude is more loudness become more children sometimes we are not able to resist the sound we just close down the ears which means amplitude of that sound is maximum we are not able to resist the sound its characteristic picture i have shown you children for better understanding let me take a transverse wave amplitude transverse wave see this is amplitude children this is the the equilibrium position okay equilibrium position of the water the waves rise and fall the maximum height is this so from here to here this is amplitude maximum displacement of the wave from its mean position is known as amplitude here amplitude there are number of characteristics in this amplitude wave length frequency time period wave velocity etc in this chain so that's about the amplitude chain the second part time period time period uh, this can be explained children if we consider an oscillating object oscillation oscillation means the to and fro movement of an object from the fixed position example we can say pendulum second example you might have seen 
lamps are being uh, placed in the churches and temples using the chains. A slow breeze or wind can shake its movement. Oscillates, oscillates. The to and fro movement of an object from a fixed position is called oscillation. Time period means how many oscillations in one second. Okay. Time taken by the vibrating object to complete one vibration. To complete one vibration or one oscillation, how much time it takes? Time taken by the vibrating object. Okay. See, this can be explained better using this diagram. Student. It is a pendulum. Student. Length of the pendulum from here to here, it is a bob. This is the central position which is at rest. Okay. Bring it to this displacement. Okay. Slowly you release it, release the bob, then it move, goes to A and reaches C, then it comes to A and B. It starts oscillating the to and fro motion of an object. From the fixed position is known as oscillation. One oscillation means, see, an object which is brought here, which is released, then it goes to A, reaches C, comes to A, reaches B. This is one oscillation. One oscillation starts from B, goes and comes back to B. One oscillation. To make one oscillation, what is the time taken? Time taken. Time taken by the vibrating object or oscillating object. To complete one vibration or one oscillation is called time period. First we have seen amplitude. Second is time period. Amplitude is nothing but the maximum displacement of the wave from its main position. Maximum displacement of a wave or vibrating object from its central position. Second one, time period. Time period is time taken by the vibrating object to complete one vibration. What is the time taken? We call that as time period. It is a simple pendulum. This is the mean position uh, central position children oscillation takes one oscillation means how much we see for one oscillation what is the time taken we call that as a time period children next frequency this is a common term to us how frequently you visit the temple how frequently you visit the church how frequently you miss the classes frequency this can be uh, its answer can be given in three ways if it is an oscillating object what we have seen previously oscillating object number of oscillations in one second or the time period number of oscillations in one second is known as frequency of oscillating body if it is a vibrating body Number of vibrations per second. If it is a transverse wave or a wave, number of wave cycles per second. So, these are the ways we uh, define this term frequency children. Number of vibrations per second in this we have taken. Because it is related to sound, therefore, sound is produced by vibrating objects. Number of vibrations per second is called frequency. The system of international unit, as a unit of this is Hertz. In short, we write down HZ. If an object oscillates, oscillations I have taken, if an object oscillates 20 times in one second, then its frequency is 20 hertz. That's the answer children. The to and fro motion of vibrating body 
from its mean position is called oscillation. We have discussed these things today. Relation between time period and frequency. There is a relationship. Uh, these relationship formula part will help us to solve sums based on this lesson children. The relation between time period and frequency. Time period is equal to 1 by frequency. Time period is equal to 1 by frequency. This is the relation between time period and frequency. The next part is loudness. If the loudness become more, our ear cannot resist it. We close our ears. So, in what way we can link this loudness of the sound to the hearing part? The loudness of the sound depends on amplitude of the vibrating object. Amplitude means the maximum displacement of the wave from its mean position. Nothing but the height of the wave. If the height of the wave increases, loudness increases. Loudness of the sound is expressed in the unit called decibel. Decibel. Loudness is expressed in the unit called decibel. The loudness of the sound is a measure of sound energy reaching the ear per second. This is about loudness of a sound children. See, regarding the loudness, I have taken two waves. For the first one, we have the lesser amplitude. For the second part, we have amplitude becomes more. Height of the wave, if we consider this becomes the, uh, the average or equilibrium position, mean position, the height of the wave is more in this, the height of the wave is lesser. Therefore, the loudness of the sound increases with amplitude of the sound. Loudness depends on dash. This is how a fill in the blanks questions can be asked. Loudness of the sound depends on amplitude. More amplitude, loudness more. Less amplitude, less loudness. Quiet and the loud. Low volume, high volume. See here, this is the amplitude level. See in this, this is the amplitude. Maximum displacement of the wave from its main position. Height of the wave is more, therefore, loudness becomes more. The amplitude becomes less, therefore, low volume. High volume, high low volume. Then, the loudness of the sound is expressed in terms of decibels we have seen children. Breathing, which takes about around 10 decibels. Whispering, 30 decibels. Normal conversation takes about 60 decibels. Busy traffic is about 70 decibels. Average factory is about 80 decibels. About 80 decibels, noise becomes physically painful. Children, today we stop in this. Tomorrow we will continue with the remaining part of the lesson. Quickly, we will revise what has been done, children. Regarding sound, children, it's a form of energy which causes the sensation of hearing. How sound is produced? Sound is produced by vibration of objects or vibrating objects. Sound can be produced by vibrating strings through stringed instruments, vibrating air column that is fluke, vibrating membranes, tabular drum, etc. Vibrating plates called bicycle bell. There are a number of notes which have been taken in this lesson, children. First note is sound wave is a longitudinal wave. There are two types of waves, children, in general. 
one is longitudinal one is transverse wave sound is a longitudinal wave transverse wave light waves x rays gamma rays radio waves are the example of a transverse waves transverse waves will have crests and troughs whereas this longitudinal waves will have compressions and rarefactions now two is sound requires a material medium for its propagation for which we have an experiment in the textbook which is mentioned a bell jar experiment in which electric bell is taken the wires are being connected to the switch and the uh, cell battery when the switch is on electricity flows electric bell rings sound is heard through the vacuum pump if the air which is present in the jar is sucked out slowly 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 the volume decreases and becomes zero we will not be able to hear any sound still it's ringing so this experiment says that it requires sound requires a material medium for its propagation this is another experiment based on that children then we have a voice box called larynx which has two ligaments called vocal cords children when the vocal cords vibrate sound is produced voice box vocal cords the human ear parts the main ear the three parts outer middle and inner the sound enters the ear through ear canal and reaches the ear drum it vibrates the vibration gets transferred into the middle ear through tiny ear bones called hammer anvil and stirrup then these vibrations get transferred into inner ear which has a special nerve called auditory nerve this auditory nerve transfers these vibrations to the brain the brain interprets as the sound therefore we say sound is a form of energy which causes the sensation of hearing sound can travel through solids liquids gases but not in vacuum because vacuum has no molecules to vibrate speed of sound we have seen characteristics of the sound very important one children loud amplitude the maximum displacement of the vibrating object from its central position see this is amplitude time period time taken by the vibrating object to complete one vibration or to complete one oscillation is called time period see it is released from b it goes to a and c again it comes to b for which what is the time taken one oscillation for one oscillation what is the time taken we call that as time period then we see frequency number of vibrations per second or number of oscillations per second or number of wave cycles per second we are saying it is frequency an object oscillates 20 times in one second its frequency is 20 hertz the to and fro motion of the vibrating body from its mean position is called oscillation the relation between time period and the frequency time period is equal to 1 by f 1 by frequency children characteristics of the sound loudness first we have taken children loudness of the sound depends on amplitude amplitude if the amplitude is more loudness become more loudness of a is a quieter sound is quiet sound is loud amplitude is more amplitude is less then this is amplitude is less amplitude is more breathing it takes about uh, loudness of the sound is expressed in terms of decibels breathing tendency whispering etc we have given children 
Regarding this children, we have seen, uh, we will see in the, in the next class children. Please go through the text children. Many experiments, small, small activities and experiments which are mentioned in the textbook children, which will give you a better understanding of uh, this lesson sound. Thank you children.